I think we broke Will. <laughs> <laughs> exciting episode we're going to be mixing concrete and pouring footings. So the first thing that we have to do is just clean up the site. We had a black plastic wrap wrapped around the building just to protect it after the sheets had been taken out. So we're just making some profile hurdles here for our string lines. We just shot a laser. I'm trying to show you the laser line, the green line. So that laser line was shot around the entire perimeter. And that was the height that we're working to for the top of the steel posts. So that way when I put my steel posts in with the string line, I know exactly where I want them to finish in the concrete. And I'm just driving a little nail here, and that nail is exactly where I want the string line to be. So I'm just going to hang my string line off that nail and then walk it up the side of the building. The green line there is just showing you the centre post holes. So this is us just preparing oh, <laughs> our steel posts that are going to be put underground you know, into the concrete. So you need to paint it with a black bituminous paint. So that's what we're doing here, just painting it on directly. We did go by the recommended bitumen um, watering down, but it didn't work as well. So we decided to just paint the material straight from the bucket and that came out much smoother and much nicer. Gave a thicker coat too which we think might actually give it better um, protection. This is the footing or the base plate that goes in ground. So you just screw it on with some M12 hex heads or tech screws and this is a metal drill bit tip screw so it just has a self tapping head making it a lot easier to, drill, to drive in. And now I'm just marking up to the height of the post that I would like, keeping in mind how much I want it to go into the ground and how much I want it to go above the ground. So I just mark the posts and then just cut them off with my angle grinder with a cut off wheel. I don't know if anyone else has been using Makita cut off wheels lately, but they seem to be wearing out much quicker than what they used to. I'm not sure if they've changed their composition or something, but if you guys know, let me know in the comments section. I'm interested to know. Unfortunately, we had some pretty tight access, so I had to shovel in all the concrete by hand into the back of the room. And Will just stood directly in front of the camera there. I was trying to show you how I mix up concrete, but Will just got in the way. This is how I cut up a concrete bag. I just find it easier to split it into two parts. Just make a little slice down the middle, lift it up, and then give it another slice down the middle to make it into two little neat little packages. That way you don't have to shake a bag in front of your face and get a bag sort of caught up. It's much, much easier to manage the, the bags this way. And Will is just marking up the points where we want the ground level to be. You can see in the foreground there's a little timber uh, piece of mounting plate to the other side of the steel post. So that allows us to sit the post flush to the ground and it supports it. So we can make sure it's square and level so it doesn't jiggle or move at all. And that's just a little post level so I can check that I'm level and plumb all the way around. Yeah. Mate, working hard.
do is get dirty and stand by something and it looks like you're doing something. Yeah, pretty much. What I didn't show is the plumber has actually been in our house, so unfortunately we don't have a hose, so we've been doing this off the back of my truck. I've got a big water tank in the back of it, so our water is actually coming from a bucket. We don't have a running hose, which makes this a lot harder. Normally I'd be washing out my, uh, my concrete mixer every time to get it lit clean and keep it nice and moist, but Without a running hose and high pressure water, it's really hard to do that. Pushing it down just nice and slowly, keeping it plumb and square the whole way through. Because once it gets to the bottom, once you're 1.2 metres into that concrete, it's very hard to try and readjust it. And that's it. 